Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the new and somewhat unusual, and actually quite unexpected discoveries, coming from various locations in the Kuiper Belt, the location where Pluto is. And specifically, we have some really intriguing discoveries from two very famous dwarf planets, but also discoveries that actually surprised everyone. But I'm gonna keep that one for the end, mostly because I want you to watch the whole video. Anyway. Let's actually start with something coming from the New Horizons probe, because here we have a discovery that sort of confirms what a lot of New Horizons scientists expected. You can actually learn more about this in one of the previous videos in the description, where we talk about the possibility of this mission being cancelled, but in the end, not cancelling it was actually a good move, because a lot of data coming from the mission seems to suggest one of two things. Either the Kuiper Belt is much larger than we originally thought, or there might be two Kuiper belts, and the mission has just entered the second one. And that's because data coming from New Horizons keeps producing observations of an extremely elevated amount of dust, much higher than anyone expected if this was not Kuiper belt. Or in other words, it just keeps seeing more and more tiny particles, usually associated with various massive bodies in this location. And though technically it should have already left Kuiper belt a long time ago, here's roughly where it's located compared to everything else, it seems to still be inside of it. Or as I mentioned, maybe there are just two of them, extending all the way to 60 astronomical units away from the sun. And the one explanation here could maybe involve solar radiation pressure that's basically pushing some of the dust slightly farther away, even that cannot explain the amount being detected right now. Either way, the scientists using the mission are really just hoping to find another large rock to visit, so they can actually confirm all of this once and for all. But then we also have another study that focused on potentially solving one mystery, the mystery of colors. Not a lot of people know this, but Kuiper Belt is actually the most colorful place in the entire solar system. Many different objects in the Kuiper Belt seem to possess a much wider color range compared to anything else in the solar system. Even some of the images from Pluto were a lot more colorful than we thought. And there's a lot of variability in different colors depending on the object, with none of them actually resembling one another. And so one of these recent papers decided to tackle at least some of them. Here, by using ultra-high vacuum experiments that also involved a lot of radiation, they essentially revealed that, as suspected, it was all because of very complex organic molecules, but specifically the ones containing rings. So for example, things like phenanthrene, phenylene, and acenophthalene all of which kind of resemble DNA and RNA molecules, tend to end up producing slightly reddish colors. And in this case, this actually explains the colors on Makemake, Orcus, and Salacia, three of the dwarf planets in the Kuiper Belt. And though obviously other types of rings will produce slightly different colors, the main point in the paper is that it seems to explain the overall mechanism, and it's kind of related to one important concept, galactic cosmic rays. The continuous irradiation by the galactic cosmic rays, especially in these very remote locations where things don't change very much, end up producing some of the more complex chemistry, which then results in some of the most complex organic molecules technically responsible for life on Earth. Which by itself implies that there's a really big chance a very similar process involving galactic cosmic rays irradiated a lot of different objects that were headed for Earth and contained a lot of similar ice on their surface, with many of these complex molecules then settling on planet Earth. So yet another potential explanation to how life started on our own planet, or at least how a lot of the individual Lego blocks that build life came here. And then, last but not least, we have more exciting news coming from Makemake and Ares. This is Makemake, and this is a simulation of what a slightly larger Ares might look like. We've actually discussed Ares not so long ago, because it's one of the most important dwarf planets after Pluto, and technically cost Pluto its planetary status. But in essence, this relatively large object, with a radius of just over 1100 kilometers, but a distance from the Sun of 68 astronomical units, has always been assumed to contain some of the most pristine material in the solar system, basically representing a kind of an ancient chunk of really old material that never became any planet or anything else, and orbited the solar system at a very far away distance for billions of years. 
And of course, something very similar was expected of Makemake Make as well. This one is a bit smaller, only 715 kilometers in radius, and is also slightly closer, 46 astronomical units away. And in general, previous observations have always discovered that they do seem to contain a lot of methane ice, which very likely froze on the surface billions of years ago and potentially remained more or less unchanged. But the thing is, something very similar was always assumed about Pluto as well. Yet then we came to visit it, and it turned out to be just a little bit more active. Now, as a matter of fact, it wasn't just active, it was very active. It even contained atmosphere that you can see right there. Although technically this is exosphere because it's not really that dense. And so because of these revelations, a lot of scientists started to make assumptions that, okay, maybe other objects are also kind of active. But for Pluto, it made sense. It actually has five moons and one of them is really massive. So they do provide a lot of tidal effects, which do provide a lot of energy inside. But what about those other objects? Well, they were both recently observed by the iconic James Webb. And as always, we have some really exciting discoveries. Here, because James Webb is able to see not just elements and not just compounds, but even isotopes, it was able to detect ratios of various isotopes, including carbon and hydrogen. And specifically ratios of deuterium to normal hydrogen, as well as carbon-13 to carbon-12. But then also see nitrogen as well. And here, both of the isotopic ratios suggested one thing. The methane here was not old at all. It was actually being resurfaced from within. And the surface itself also appeared to be very young. So yeah, pretty much exactly like on Pluto. Which basically presents us with maybe one of three explanations. All involving a lot of geochemical processes inside these objects. Either some kind of a solid state convection, where a lot of material sloshes around, eventually producing cryovolcanoes, or there might be an ocean underneath. And not just any ocean, liquid, potentially hot water ocean. Something that still seems to exist because some of these ratios can only be produced if the resurfacing was very recent. And that's a pretty big discovery for one important reason. They all might be very similar to Enceladus. I guess we should maybe even start calling them Enceladus Lakes. And as we've discussed in many previous videos, right now Enceladus is one of the top priorities for maybe one day discovering extraterrestrial life. The oceans here seem to contain everything you would require to maybe produce life, and so if it exists anywhere, it would most likely exist here, somewhere in the oceans. Similarly, Makemake and Eris seem to possess something very similar, thus suggesting we could even have, maybe, life on the outskirts of the solar system, as far away as 68 astronomical units away from the Sun. And so yeah, NASA, or I guess someone else, can we have a spacecraft going there and finding it somehow? Um, thanks. And though these are obviously preliminary discoveries, at the moment there is really no other explanation for what the scientists discovered in terms of isotopes. And so the chance for these objects to be geologically active, and very similar to Europa and Enceladus, is extremely high. Which I guess raises the next question. What do you call life coming from Makemake? Makemakean? Makemakis? Yeah, that's a deep question, huh? Anyway, I'm sure we'll learn more in the next few months, but at least for now these are some really cool discoveries from the region we usually do not hear much about. We'll definitely come back and talk more about this once there are some additional discoveries or clarifications, but at least for now we could maybe start assuming that there might be life on the outskirts of the solar system where nobody ever expected. But we first have to confirm it on Enceladus or Europa. So hopefully in the next few years. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, check out some of the previous videos in the description on similar topics, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.